continue from where we left off last week. Last week we talked about, we finished with Abraham. And uh, we talked about how Abraham is the father of our faith. So now we're going to go to his son Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and Moses, and uh, we're going to continue with these heroes of the faith. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to come here tonight to study your word, and I pray now that as we apply your word to our hearts, that um, we might become people that look forward to the things that you have prepared for us with eyes of faith, not needing to see, but being able to understand with our hearts the things that the Holy Spirit is saying to us. May we grab hold on those things and hold on to them tightly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Hebrews chapter 11, beginning with verse number 20. By faith, Isaac. Now, Isaac is the promise that God gave to Abraham and Sarah, the young the boy that we talked about last week, um, the one that uh, Abraham took up the mountain to sacrifice and believed in his heart because of the promise of God, noting that Isaac, everything had to flow through Isaac. The whole promise of a nation had to flow through Isaac. So because of that, Abraham believed that if God asked him to sacrifice his son, he would bring his son back to life. Yep. All right? So Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. So how did he do that? Well, he didn't just put a blessing upon them, which we know that he did, but I'm sure that he told them what God had said to his father, and he told them the account of going up that mountain and having the ram uh, found in the thicket, that Isaac was prepared to say to his sons, look, this is not just a story, but because of the things that I have experienced. Now, faith is not just sitting around hoping something is going to happen. Faith has to be connected to works of some type. We walk by faith. So I'm convinced that faith is not just an attitude, although a very positive attitude helps with faith, but faith is also an activity of, the, um, of that thing that we hope for, that thing that we believe God has promised us, that he has said he's going to do, and actively working the things that God puts before us. So in other words, if God tells me that I'm going to be a multi-millionaire, if that I'm going to be a multi-millionaire, then I have to understand that God probably isn't just going to give me all that money. Just out of the sky. Yeah, just it's not just going to fall out of the sky. But there's going to have to be something that's going to have to work with it, okay? Um, uh, in in uh, Second Kings, there's the account of four lepers who were sitting outside of the city of Samaria who were literally starving to death because they were living on the garbage that was thrown over the side of the city wall. Mm -hmm. And because there was a famine in the city, the garbage was no longer coming, all right? So they said, look, if we sit here, we're going to die because there's no food being given to us here. If we go into the camp of the enemy, perhaps the enemy will have sympathy on us and at least give us something to eat because we are lepers and we're poor, all right? So what happens? They get up. You know, God has already made a promise through the prophet Elisha that the city is going to experience an overabundance of food. The next day, Elisha says, tomorrow at this time, this is going to happen, all right? Amen. The city said, well, how is this going to happen? These four lepers who nobody wanted, nobody loved, 
They were cast-offs, all right? They said, we can't just sit here and hope this is going to happen. Something has to happen. So they got up and they moved into the, the, the encampment of the Syrians. And what happens? When these four lepers begin to move, the scripture says it sounds like three armies of men coming toward them. And they get scared and they run off and they just leave everything behind. And sure enough, the next day, the city, the, the city of Samaria prospers and is fed and everything that Elisha said took place. But those four guys had to get up off from their dead rear ends and they had to march. That's all they had to do. Now, there might be some times that you are actually going to do the physical work for it. But if God has promised you something, then God is going to make that thing. He's going to give you the idea. He's going to give you the ability. He might do it in a, in a very miraculous way. He told Moses, look, I'm going to drive your enemies out with hornets. He might do that, all right? We don't know how God's going to do it. But if God says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Amen. Amen. All right? So Isaac said, look, this is what God said he's going to do. You two guys are now the guys that are going to carry that on. Now, so he says the same thing to two people, all right? Both of them his sons. Both of them twins. Both of them born on the same day. Both of them the same age. Both of them coming from the same environment. All right, there's a lot of people who say, well, you know, I came out of this environment, therefore I'm always going to be, you know, poor. I'm always going to be weak. I'm always going to be dumb. All right, that doesn't have to be the case. Esau and Jacob both came out of the same environment. They both had the same parents. And what happens? Esau becomes an enemy of God, and Jacob gets his name changed to Israel, and today an entire nation is named after him. What's the difference? The difference is this. You could... Two people can hear the same thing. They can even believe the same thing. Look, the Bible says that the devil believes that there is a God. Mm -hmm. The devil believes in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. All right? But the devil will never be saved. Why? Because when he was in perfection in heaven, he decided with his mind, he decided he was not going to follow after God. So, I'm here tonight to tell you this. There is no excuse for somebody not following after God. There's none whatsoever. There's no excuse to say, I don't know if there is a God. There's no excuse to say, I don't believe there is a God. I, there's no excuse to say, God's not going to work on my behalf. There is no excuse. The determination is ours. Am I going to believe what God has to say? Am I going to work and act on that? Or am I just going to leave it alone? Mm -hmm. okay. That's the choice. Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. He gave the same blessing. He had the opportunity. In fact, Esau had the opportunity for the greater blessing. Mm -hmm. And he refused it. The oldest son. Yeah, he says, I'm just going to sell it. I'm, I'm willing to give it up. You see, he was willing to give up his blessing. And our, uh, the question that we have to answer tonight is this. Are we willing to give up our blessing? Or are we going to believe God and activate our faith? Now listen to this. Verse 21. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped leaning upon the top of his staff. All right, now, how many of you remember the sons of Joseph? Who, what were the names of the two sons of Joseph? Ephraim. Ephraim and Manasseh. Right, okay. And um, what did Jacob do? Cross his hands. Yeah. He crossed his hands, right, okay. Why did he cross his hands?
because the younger should have received the lesser blessing. Yeah, the younger served the older. But the younger served the older. Right, okay? And when we read the accounts of Ephraim and Manasseh, half of the tribe of Manasseh never enters the promised land. That means half of the children of Manasseh believed and half of the children of Manasseh did not believe. All right? Manasseh being the oldest, he could have had the greater blessing. But because the younger believed and the older did not, the younger received the greater blessing. Now notice this. Because we're going to go to Joseph and then we're going to get to Moses. And, and the writer to Hebrews says something very interesting here. Nowhere else in Scripture do we see this particular picture leaning upon the top of his staff. Now, who else in Scripture has a staff that is important, a staff that we really remember? Moses. 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 Yeah. What did Moses do with his staff? Turned into a snake. Yeah, he threw it down, it turned into a snake, and then he picked it up, and it turned into a staff again, right? And when it was a snake, what did it do? It... It ate, it ate the snakes of the, uh, it ate the, the staffs that turned into snakes of the Egyptian sorcerers, okay? And what else did Moses do with his staff? All right, he, 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 right, he held it out over the water, right? And as he held it out over the, over the sea, what happened to the sea? The sea opened, and what did the children of Israel do? They crossed over on dry ground, okay? Now, so we have pictures in Scripture of the staff, right? Who can tell me historic? This is a historical fact now that I'm asking you. Who can tell me from history what was on that staff that was important? Power of God. The power of God? Name of Okay, the na name of God? All right, the name of God would have been on the staff. Everything, pretty much. Everything. All the miracles. Right. Everything that happened, it took place. Right, okay. There's, there is a rather interesting account in Scripture of a man who had a staff. And that man was Jacob. And if you'll remember, Jacob turned aside one day from what he was supposed to be doing, and he went in to see a harlot, okay, which was actually his daughter-in-law, and she conceived a child by him, all right? And what did she say to Jacob? She said, how do you know? He said, and I think this is, this is a guy. I forgot my billfold at home. <laughs> so he says, I don't have any money to pay you right now. I'll come back and pay you. And she says, how will I know that you're going to pay me? He, she said, I want you to leave with me what? Your staff. Your staff. Yeah. All right? So, there's something about these staffs. They just didn't go to Walmart and buy a staff. Yeah, it wasn't just All right? It wasn't like there were millions of these staffs, the same staff being, you know, chucked out by some <laughs> wood turner. All right? But these staffs were different. So, each person's staff was different. What was the most unique difference about each staff? It had the particular promises of God written on the staff. So when Moses held his staff out over the Red Sea, it was more than just a stick, but it was the promises of God. It was his witness, his testimony. It was his testimony. It was what God had spoken to him. So when, when Jacob leans on this staff, okay, when Jacob leans on this staff and he prophesies over his children, he has all of the promises of God written on that staff. Okay? So that it's not just him that's speaking, but it's God that's speaking. By the way, I think I said Jacob gave to his daughter. It was Judah. It was, and gave, it was Judah. Genesis 38. Yeah, Judah. Did, yeah. So I got Judah and Jacob mixed up. So it was Judah. But, so it was his staff. It was his staff that was speaking. Now, 
because of because he knew what his staff said to him. Now I want to apply this to us, okay? Because we have this word, right? Okay? And 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 and, and this 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 Bible is precious to us. And in in 1 Corinthians the 12th chapter, one of the things that's promised to those that believe is the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and the word of prophecy. Okay? So, how do we give those words? We give those words because we know what the scripture says. Amen. You know, I've had people say to me, you know, I get so tired of hearing, you know, somebody prophesy because so often it sounds like the Bible. Well, praise God. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you want it to sound like? Yeah, right. You know, some bum down in the corner? You know, I'm prophesying this according to the lady with the cart, you know, that goes from garbage can to garbage can. No, we don't do it that way. We prophesy according to the Word of God. You know, this afternoon, or actually it's this morning, Pastor Kane called me up. And uh, we, we talked for about a half hour. And uh, he, he has a real important decision. I mean, he has been given an opportunity that's just unbelievable, okay? But he says, Pastor Dan, I want to make sure it's God, okay? Amen. And so he, he's calling me for advice, all right? And while he's talking to me, I'm, I'm getting this picture in my mind of, of an account that happened to David, all right? Where... David was put into a position where God said to him, you're going to defeat the Philistines. He goes out and defeats the Philistines. And then the Philistines come back up after him again. And God says, you're going to do it, but this time it's going to be different. You've got to wait till you hear the sound of the angels in the trees. You know? And, and, you know, and, I, and I said to Pastor Tang, I said, you know, Pastor Tang, I said, I believe that God is going to get you. You called me Okay, because you see me as a spiritual leader, all right? You've, you've called me for some advice, and here's my advice to you. Don't listen to anybody else, but listen to the voice of God. Amen. God's going to tell you how to fulfill this vision. You know, he, you know and, 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 and I said, sometimes the devil can dangle real pretty things out in front of us. And they could look really, really good. I mean, they can look excellent. It can be a really nice thing. But if it's not what God wants us to do, then it's not fulfilling the vision that God's brought us to. God desires we fulfill the vision that he's brought us to. So, here we go now. Verse 22. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. All right, what commandment did Joseph give the children of Israel concerning his bones? Don't leave me in Egypt. Don't leave me in Egypt. All right? So in other words, he didn't want his bones left in Egypt. Why didn't Joseph want his bones left in Egypt? He was delivered from Egypt? Well, he was dead, so yeah, he was delivered from Egypt. <laughs> Why didn't he want his bones left in Egypt? Oh, wow! Isn't that great? We had, a, we had an early resurrection there. That's right. Okay. What happened is this. The Bible says that on the day that Jesus rose from the dead, that there were graves that were opened in Jerusalem, and many of the dead that were in those graves walked the streets of Jerusalem. Now, that had never happened before. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, how is it that Joseph knew that? God told him. God told him. 
Now, now here's the deal, okay? These guys didn't have a Bible like we've got right now. They had nothing to verify it with. They had never experienced it before. They'd never seen it. But yet they believed. Faith is the substance of things, the evidence of things unseen. For by faith did these heroes walk. Amazing. It's amazing. Now, just think of this. We have the Bible. We have people that have experienced. <coughs> we have people that walk with us today that have experienced miracles. And yet there are people who, you know, there, there are a lot of people today, if I stood up and said, I'd like you to take your Bibles and turn with me, they'd think that's a bunch of hocus pocus because they don't believe the Bible. They don't believe in Jesus then. That's right. If you don't believe the Bible, you can't believe in Jesus. Amen. And, you know, and, and here's what I'm saying, Nancy. Yeah. You can believe that Jesus is real. Amen. You can believe that Jesus is God. But if you don't activate it, it's not going to do anything for your life. Amen. It will do nothing for you. It will only be another... Oh, I see a red can back there that says Folgers in it. I know that that red can holds coffee grounds. I know that I can take that coffee and I can put it in a percolator and I can make hot coffee, right? But until I do it, I'll never have hot coffee. Good example. I'll always have in front of me the red canister with lots of opportunity. But I'll never experience it, I'll never enjoy it, until I activate it. Good work. Looking at that canister, again, I don't see coffee, do I? I see a red can. And I see ground up coffee beans. Ground up coffee beans and a red can doesn't look anything like coffee, does it? <laughs> no. But you add some water, you wait a little while, okay? And, and, and what does the Bible say about the farmer? What does the, what does the Bible say about the farmer? He plants his seed, he waters it, he waits a little while, okay? Faith and activating faith doesn't mean that's all going to happen right now. It's a process. It might take some time. All right. Notice this. Good word, Pastor Dan. By faith, verse 23. Thank you, Paula. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child. Now, that word beautiful um, simply means that they saw that there was something special about this child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. What was the king's commandment? Hebrews. To kill all the Jewish babies. Hebrews, all right? Hebrews 11. But what did Moses' parents do? They hid him in an ark made of bulrushes. And they put him in the river Nile. And the king's daughter found him. And she said... Isn't this a beautiful child? And this little Jewish girl comes up to him and up to the, to the princess and says, Would you like to have somebody come and feed this baby? <laughs> so they went and got Moses' mama to come. Now, this, I mean, cool. then this is just, you know, this isn't just happenstance. Right. This is God. I mean, sometimes. You know, sometimes God just does the weirdest things. Yeah, I, I remember the story of our daughter Erin when, 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 when she was invited to put together this school down in Guatemala. 
And, and the, the government said, we're for you, we will work with you, we'll do everything that we can. But you know, one person that doesn't hear from God and doesn't know what God's doing can mess up everything. And sometimes God puts those people in our way to test us. Mm -hmm. He could stop it, but he doesn't. And, but he allows them to come just to see if they can mess us up. And so Aaron needed this letter from the governor of the, of the state of Zacapa in Zacapa, Guatemala. So she made this appointment. On the day that she had the appointment, she made sure that she was there early. She walked up to the receptionist's desk. The receptionist said, may I help you? And Aaron said, I'm here to talk to the governor. I need a letter from him. And the lady looked at her, at her schedule, and she said, well, your name isn't on this schedule, so you don't have an appointment today. And even if you did have an appointment, we couldn't give you that letter today because, because it takes time for it to be, uh, to be given by the governor to his secretary. She has to type it, and she has to give it the... In Guatemala, they love seals. It needs the proper seal, you know. <laughs> Everything has to be done. And Aaron said, well, when can I have another appointment? This lady looked at her book and she says, I don't know, you'll have to just call and make an appointment. And so Aaron turned around and she's walking out of this room. And just as she was walking out of the room, she put her hand on the door. She was opening it up to walk out. And just as she did that, a lady walked out of the side door, and Aaron could hear, hear her whispering to this receptionist. And the lady that walked out the door said, just a second, are you Miss Cole? And Aaron said, yes, I am. And she said, well, would you please follow me? So she brought Aaron around this big receptionist's desk through this side door, and she entered right into the governor's office. And the governor was sitting at his desk. And he stood up and he said, Are you Miss Cole? And Aaron said, Yes, I am. And he came from around his desk and he shook her hand. And he said, We're so happy you're here. We're so glad you're helping the people of our country and particularly our city. Is there anything I can do for you? And Aaron says, I need a letter from you. And he says, Fine. And right there and then, they got the letter. They put the seal on it. And Aaron walked out of the governor's office. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. I can tell you story after story after story like that. Like Aaron needed five hundred dollars to go to Mexico so that she could go to this summer school and and uh, um, learn Spanish. And and uh, right at the moment that 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 everything had been applied for and had been approved, um, she got this letter that all the government funding had fallen through. We didn't have money to send her to Mexico and to pay for this, this trip. And, uh, you know, we, we said, we don't know what we're going to do. And so we prayed. And, and I went over to the church. Sometimes I was pastoring the church over on 10th Avenue. And I went over to the church for a men's meeting. And that night, as I left the men's meeting, I decided to go into my study I opened up my study door, and there was something that drugged between the door and the carpet as I opened up the door, and here was this envelope, and it said Aaron on it, and I, I didn't open it up. I squeezed it, though, you know, and it felt like, you know, sometimes people, you know, will give girls some nice things, like maybe a nice hanky or something like that. I thought, maybe there's a hanky in here, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know? So I took it home, and I said, Aaron, there was this letter, there's this envelope for you under the door tonight. And I, I remember, never, never forget this. I can still see it in my mind. Rita and I are staying at the refrigerator, and we're talking, and Aaron's over at the table, and she opens up this envelope. And, she, and I, I just see her standing there. She just, she's just standing there. And so she comes over to where we are, and she says, Dad, you know what's in this envelope? And I said, no. I said, honestly, I think Myra Goebel gave you a doily or a hanky or something. You know? 
And she pulled out of that envelope $2,000 oh. in $100 bills. Wow. wow. Exactly what she needed to go to Mexico and study Spanish. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, there's just miracle after miracle after miracle. But you know what? I remember helping Erin fill out those, all those documents we had to fill out, too. I remember all the tears she cried. Do we really have to do this? Huh? What's the rest of the story? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll tell the rest of the story. So, this, this was, Aaron, was a senior, Aaron was a senior in high school. It was her senior year in high school. So it was right after her senior year, before she went to Bethel College, that uh, she, you know, that this, that this was taking place. And so after that incident with the money, and Rita and I bought her plane tickets. We thought, that, and at that point in time, round trip air tickets to Mexico City was like almost four hundred dollars. So we bought her these plane tickets, and that was a big deal to us. We thought, man, we really, you know, we we blew our budget for a long time buying $400 worth of air tickets, you know. And so uh, then we get this letter in the mail that she needs $500 for pocket money while she's down there. That was the, that's what they were thinking each student had to have budgeted. Well, where were we going to get 500 bucks, okay? So Shakopee has an all-night graduation party, okay? And Rita and I signed up to work of the, the morning shift. The last shift. The last shift. I think it's over at 6 o'clock in the morning or something like that, okay? So we're watching all these kids get, you know, um, coolers and lawn chairs and beach balls, you know, that kind of thing. And Erin's sitting there, and she's not getting anything, all right? And I, I'll, I'll never forget, Rita and I are standing at this counter at the old high school. We're standing at this counter... And we're getting some sandwiches ready. And I said, man, I'm really, I said to Rita, I'm really upset. I'm mad, you know, because Aaron's not getting anything, you know. And Rita says, just settle down, Dad, okay? So, like Rita always said. Yeah, all right. So they give out all these gifts, okay? And then they, they the guy that's, do, that's they, they're doing it with ping pong balls, it was a big, big roller thing, like almost like bingo. And uh, he says, all right, are there any people here that have not won any prizes yet, okay? And there were five people that had not received prizes. Aaron was one of them. And he says, okay, I would like you to uh, come up here. And uh, he said, uh, they had a number that had to match or something. I forget what it was exactly, okay? But they had five balls left, and they had these five students left. And I, and I forget exactly, I think there was like, I know there was a stereo system. And a TV. Yeah, they, they were pretty good sized prizes. But the very last prize was $500. <laughs> you know? And, and so Reed and I stood there holding our breath, you know? And First one person got something, the next person got something, and, they, and it was down to two people, and it was like a, like a television set and 500 bucks. You know, and I'm standing there and I'm thinking, this is just too good to be true. And the guy grabbed the ball, and he said, here's the number, and that lady got the television set, and Aaron, there was no choice. She got 500 bucks. Now, I have to ask this question. Why did God make her wait till the very last event in her high school experience? The very last opportunity for, a test. for anything to happen mm -hmm. for her That's to get that $500. Works. That's just how God works. Amen. Yeah, and, that, and I don't know how it is in your life. I don't know what it is that God's doing in your life but I'm just telling you right now, hang on. Amen. If God's told you, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something to you right now. I know tonight that there are things 
that have not come to pass in my life because I got tired of waiting for you. In some cases, I went ahead and did it all by myself. And, and I can tell you, I have bought cars when I wasn't supposed to because I was supposed to wait for the right time. There have been other things in my life that I, I didn't wait for the right time. And, and I made, now God helped me through it all. Mm -hmm. But it could have been better than it was if I just would have waited for God. All right. So, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter.